and welcome back to the Part More podcast. Um, my name is Stacey and I'm a knitter and crocheter um, based in the southwest of England in Devon. Um, I live here with my husband and my three daughters um, and this is a podcast about sort of you know the general standard knitting pro crochet projects what I've started what I've finished and things like that. Um, Hello to, uh, I've got a few new subscribers, so hello to my new subscribers and welcome back to anyone who's been here before. Um, I am up to 500 subscribers, it feels like a really little milestone in comparison to so many other podcasts, but I think I've been doing this for three years now, so um, yeah, 500, is a, <laughs> 500 is, a, is a nice round number to get to. Um, so thank you very much if you're a subscriber. Um, and if you are not, I would be very grateful if you would like to subscribe. Um, okay, I've left it a bit longer than usual than I wanted to for this podcast. Not than usual, because it's quite usual to leave it a while. Um, but I've left it a little bit longer <clears throat> than I had planned because life. <laughs> life just got busy, got in the way. Um, and yeah, weekends, because I work during the week and we have a really busy school, after school um after school life with the children and and the clubs and stuff um sorry for playing with my hair um weekends are just uh, also super busy so this morning i find myself today is what are we oh we're in the first of october <laughs> it's october oh that means in two months is advent so exciting i forgot it was october this morning so happy october everybody we are well into autumn now um yes today is the Sunday the 1st of October, um, me and my husband were out last night at a wedding and so my children are not here, they're with my mother-in-law and my husband has gone to work. So I find myself in an empty house. Um, my eldest daughter might be back soon, but at the moment I find myself in an empty house. Um, so I thought I would do an impromptu podcast. Impromptu, is that a spider? No, it's a snail. Um, impromptu means I haven't got any notes. <laughs> but I do have a few works in progress. I have a couple of finished objects that weren't started on the last podcast, surprise, surprise, because it's been so long. Um, yes, and a couple of acquisitions from our holiday in France, actually. So that's quite interesting. Um, and let's get started. <clears throat> so first finished object that was not started on the last podcast is what I'm wearing. Um, and this is the Pink Velvet by Andrea Mowry. I absolutely love it. Let's see if I can um, let's get up a bit higher so you can see it in its glory. Oh, there we go. So, um, yeah, my, the full details are on my, because I finished this a while ago. Um, hang on, let me just show you it and then, I, then I'll get down and talk. So, mm, 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 that's sort of the top of my trousers. So, it's a really good fit. Okay. I know, I know some people like to see my lips, so I didn't want to talk too much when I wasn't looking at the camera. Um, yes, what was I going to say? Oh, I finished this a while ago, so um, full details of like needle sizes and, and things like that on my Ravelry project page, which will be linked below. Um, so this is the Pink Velvet by Andrea Mowry. Let me get you a close-up of this absolutely gorgeous colour work. Um, I really enjoyed knitting this. I, I haven't knitted much. Um, it goes all the way around the back. Um, I haven't knitted much colour work. In fact, this is my first colour work garment. Um, and I think I'd only just done a cowl before this. I'm super pleased with how this came out. I could show you my, show you my floats. I think they're pretty neat. Um, and I just had a I just had a craving. So Andrea Mowry had a big birthday sale, um, end of July, beginning of August, something like that. Um, and I thought, let's just do it. Let's just let's just go for something. So I went for this. Um, I'm just going to bring you down slightly because I feel a bit. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so I went for this, and I absolutely love it. Um, it's I knitted it pretty much exactly to pattern. So the length is the pattern sort of recommended. Normally I'd wear my jumpers here. Um, but because this is <clears throat> a, a sort of a lighter weight yarn, um, it's just going to be perfect for transitional stuff, wearing to the office with a pair of smart trousers, um, things like that. Um, so the yarn is, um, this is Pulse Soho Linen Quill in 
oatmeal grey maybe, can't quite remember it, it's on my Ravelry page, um, maybe oatmeal grey, um, it's a really good neutral, I had bought it to make a triangles blanket a couple of years ago, triangle, half and half wrap, half and half wrap, um, but I didn't because I used the red for another project that I finished earlier this year, um, so I decided to put this into a sweater, um, and then the green, and, and it is, it's not itchy at all actually, it's linen, alpaca and wool, um, and I thought, I thought the, the alpaca might make it a bit itchy, but it hasn't, um, and the green, uh, this beautiful sort of, yeah, this beautiful bottle green, which is, is pretty much, it's, it's, it's actually a tiny bit, so it's a bit richer in real life than it's showing on camera, maybe this sort of colour, it's really rich. Um, and this is a Merino Singles from Zakama Yarn. Um, it didn't have, I don't think it had a name. Um, I used to do their, um, well, I used to, I, mean, I might still in the future. Um, they do yes, no boxes. So basically it's just like a lucky dip type thing. So you order a box from them and it comes with random skeins of yarn in different fibres, different thicknesses, colours, all that sort of thing. And I, sometimes I like that just to try something a bit different. Um, and this was one of those, so I think it was an unnamed um, unnamed colour, but it goes amazing um, with this sort of oatmeal-y oatmeal wool. Um, I love the fit of this. It's got, it has got some positive ease, uh, not loads, but enough. But the arms are quite like almost probably zero, probably zero maybe, maybe a tiny bit. <clears throat> tiny bit of positive ease but I quite like the fit of it it makes it more um it makes it smarter um so it's not like a baggy jumper it's something I can definitely wear like I say to work or to the office um, and I really enjoyed knitting it it's fingering weight so it did take it's all four ply um so it did take a while uh, but this bit just flew because yeah I just really really enjoyed it so this this bit flew and then it was just round and round on the body um but because it was a little tiny bit cropped and a bit shorter sleeves it just whizzed by so I'd highly recommend this pattern if you're looking for sort of colour work even like there's no even for a beginner colour beginner colour worker um, there's not huge amounts of um, gaps between between the colour work so you're you're not picking up you're not having to carry really long floats so this you know this yoke and the construction was fairly straightforward it's just a yoked construction and then Knitting down, there are some short rows in the back. Um, yeah, so I would recommend this for a beginner colour worker um, or even a beginner garmenter, you know, if you've not done a garment before. So, yeah, so this is my first finished object and I am super proud of it. Um, and it's got me off on a bit of a colour work kick at the moment, which you'll see from some other projects. Um, so my next finished object, <clears throat> which I had, you had seen in the last podcast, and that's the only one that I had actually that was a whip in the last pro podcast um is my whitmore cardigan by um amy loudon who is taylor s studios um and i love it um so here it is you're not going to be able to see it because it's a cardigan and it's really hard to show up so i have taken some pictures which i put on my instagram so i'll insert those here um and if i feel like it i might do a bit of b-roll do they call it of the video I'll insert a little video clip if I if I get round to it at the end of this, um, but yeah. So this is the cardigan. This is so it's a beautiful, beautiful lace pattern. Um, it's quite it's got quite a lot of positive ease. Um, <clears throat> the sleeves are you know quite wide and then sort of they stay wide, um, and it's got quite a good length to it. Um, it blocked out amazing. This yarn. I'll show you the lace pattern up close. And obviously it goes all the way around the back that's a good picture um and this this yarn is um holst super soft in the color wave um i got this on a d stash from the lovely ruth loves to knit um and i haven't used all of it i haven't used all the 500 grams i don't know how much this weighs actually i haven't done that yet um and i pretty much knitted it to pattern um, again, details are on my Ravelry page, but I, I've worn this loads. It's so warm, um, super soft, sort of softened up quite a bit. It's still a little bit rough. I think it will soften up after another couple of washes. Um, so it's not sort of fully soft, but it's definitely softer than it was when I was knitting with it. 
um, and it, it's, it's incredibly warm. Um, I've worn this with jeans, I've worn this over dresses to work, um, and it's got a lot of compliments, um, obviously largely down to the beautiful lace pattern. Um, but it's, I think it's probably my best, well, I like this too, my best knit, my neatest knit. I don't know, I really love this and I think I'll get so much use out of it through the winter. I need a darker colour now really, to wear with some sort of like my darker, some darker clothes, because this is really great over like a white t-shirt or um, like a pale dress, but it doesn't quite go with the really, really sort of black stuff. So I need another one <laughs> in a darker colour. Um, but yeah, um, I, I loved knitting this. I would really recommend this pattern, especially for a beginner lace. It was a really straightforward lace pattern. Um, obviously I put in, you, you, she talks you through the pattern so well. You use loads of stitch markers to help you through it. Um, you might have meant, I might have mentioned on my last, sorry, <laughs> talk to the camera. Um, I might have mentioned on my last podcast that I made a mistake. Um, and I'm trying to find it now because I forgot to correct it, but actually it doesn't matter because if I can't find it, then it's not really noticeable. Um, where is that? <clears throat> where did I make the mistake? Oh, there. So I did make a mistake. You can see there's a there's a hole there where it shouldn't be um, and I and there's sort of not a hole here so basically I did the hole in the wrong place you, I was gonna sort it out when I blocked before I blocked it when I sewed in my ends um, but you can't see it when it's on you just you can't tell there's too much lace going on you can't see so um, I'm not bothered that that is not fixed um, yeah I don't think there's much else to say about that say so it's a mass it's a really really great cardigan for just throwing over anything and everything all seasons and the host it's the first time I've knitted with it um, and I enjoy knitting with it I know a lot of people don't because it's covered in spinning oils but I found that really good for my hands it was really grippy and I really enjoyed the texture of knitting with that um, but it has washed out amazingly and and it's blocked beautifully so super impressed with this finished object uh next finished object next and last finished object um and this is something i so i started this at the beginning of august um and this is the i say finished it's not blocked but i did sew all the ends in yesterday so i'm counting it as finished um and this is a free pattern um and it is here we go um this is called jingle bells and it's by Fikalana. And it's a free pattern on their website. Oh, I've got it on Ravelry. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and it's this beautiful jumper with Christmas trees on it. Um, it's a kid's jumper. So I've, I've, I wanted to, my two youngest ones wanted Christmas jumpers. Um, and yeah, it's called Jingle Bells. Um, as I say, it's a free pattern. So I can talk quite freely about it. Um, it is definitely, let me show it to you. Hang on, it's inside out because I've been sewing in my ends. Let me turn it around the right way. Um, it, I wouldn't, say it's necessarily for a beginner um it's not a it's a pattern where well I'll, I'll, I'll explain in a minute um so anyway so here it is so it's not blocked yet so excuse the sort of color works probably all a little bit ruched um i bloody love it oh gosh sorry i shouldn't swear well, that's twice now um it's really really beautiful so yeah, you can see the short rows on the back, you can see, um, so obviously it's really well fitted. The Christmas trees are amazing and these two colours together, I need something in this, without a doubt. Um, and it's got the colour work detail on the sleeve um, and again on the bottom, uh, it's got that beautiful colour work detail. Um, I didn't change much about this pattern. Um, yeah, so, oh, let me tell you about the yarn, then I'll talk about the pattern. So the yarn is, so the main blue, it's like this beautiful navy blue. Oh, look at that, look at that. Uh, this beautiful, make sure that's not someone for me. Um, this beautiful navy blue is Drops Lima, um, and it's the first time, no, it's not for me. Um, it's the first time I've knitted with it. Um, and I really, really loved it. Um, I would definitely knit with it again. Um, oh, hang on. 
So it's Drops Lima. And this is a blah, blah. Where does it tell me what it is? It's 65% wool, um, 35% alpaca. Um, it's DK, so it's, um, where does it tell me that bit? So 100 meters is 109 yards. No, 15, <laughs> yeah, of course it is, because that's like maths. Uh, 50 grams is 100 meters, so maybe slightly thicker than, than DK. Um, 109 yards for 50 grams, yeah, so slightly thicker than DK maybe. Um, and it's colour 9016. Um, <clears throat> and I used, I used seven full balls. I bought eight balls and I've got this left. So that's sort of a partial one. That's almost full. I literally used it to do the last, sort of do the last, this much of the cuff and this left. So maybe that together. So maybe it took seven balls for this one and it's in the eldest size, size 12. Uh, that's the biggest size that they did on the pattern because my daughter is 10. So I want this to last her for a couple of years. Um, and the contrast colorway, which is so beautiful, um, is this really beautiful tonal pink. Um, and this is from Dusty Dimples. Um, and again, it's um, go Dusty Dimples. Um, and this was like a random Lucky Dip thing. Um, and it's their worsted base. Um, and it's 100% Superwash Extra Fine Merino. Um, 230 meters for 115 grams. So it's a slightly bigger hank. So it's probably, yeah, worsted. I, I think the blue's probably worsted as well. Um, and the color armor, um, A-M, Amour, sorry. A-M-O-U-R, Amour, um, for love. So that was, the, that was the pink. And together, they are stunning. The tonal of the pink makes the trees look like, like they've got like a natural shadow to them where it's like tonal. So you, it, it looks like, you know, real, looks a bit more lifelike, I think. Um, so pattern wise, <clears throat> so there was a, there was a couple of little glitches with the pattern. Um, I mean, again, it's a free pattern and it's, I assume at some point, yeah, it's been translated. So it was originally written in, um, wherever Fikalana is, is that, I don't know, wherever they're based. Um, it was obviously originally written in another language and it's been translated. So that, you know, that might be part of it. Um, but in terms of, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner because it was a bit loosely worded in places. So, for example, the short rows, um, it just says work a short row. So if you've not done a short row before, it's not obvious what that is. Um, I have done short rows before, so that's fine. And you can find, you know, you can find lots of YouTube videos telling you how to do short rows. Um, but the pattern is not going to break it down for you. Um, <clears throat> there was another bit where it said, um, yeah, increase so many stitches evenly on the round. So it didn't tell you where to increase or how often to increase. So you just needed to calculate it yourself and work out the increases. Um, <clears throat> there was another bit as well. I can't remember where it was. I didn't do the, I didn't do the bind off recommended. It recommended an Italian bind off. And I just did the standard knit one pearl one bind off because that's I find that good enough for my needs and I am when it comes to the end of my patterns I'm far too lazy and impatient to spend time doing that kind of pattern um where's the other bit that I was like hmm. I can't remember but uh yeah there was a couple of little bits like that where it was just a bit sort of not explicitly written so you just had to do it um and I did find and whether it was just me reading the pattern wrong so my beginning of round marker, when you first start, your beginning of round marker is, is here at the, at the center back, like you'd expect. So you knit round and round. Then when it told me to split for the sleeve, so obviously you've got your short rows at the back, it's, it's a nice even balance. When it told you to split for the sleeves and the way it told you to knit it, the jumper would have been like this. So it would have been half the short rows here and half like that. So I had to move the beginning of round stitch marker and I had to change where my 
sleep before I split for the sleeves. So just bear that in mind. It could just be me. I might have just read it wrong. So just as you as before you split for the sleeves, if you're going to knit this pattern, just be aware of where your beginning of round stitch marker is to make sure your short rows are at the back when you split for your sleeves. Otherwise, you'll have a wonky jumper, which um, you might see in a minute on another jumper. Um, but this one's fine. <laughs> uh, and my daughter absolutely loves it. She's going to, you know, no one's going to have a Christmas jumper like this one. It's quite subtle and I absolutely want one now. So it's on my list for next year for me. Um, but yeah, so this is um, the Jingle Bells by Fikalana. And I'm going to block that today. So that's exciting. Uh, oops, stop that over there. Oops, put that away. <clears throat> um, what should we do next? What's in there? Oh, no, let's not do that one. Oh, I was going to show you the yarn for this. I've got the bag here. Sorry. I was just going to show you the actual... This is what I've got left. So that's the balls. Look at that green. Oh, it's not coming out on camera. It's much more, it's a much richer green than it's showing on camera. But anyway, that was the yarn for that one. Right. Let's do, let's do this one. Let's have a break from colour work for a minute and move on to something else. Um, so I have decided to knit um, the... What's it called? What's it called? I didn't print off the page. The Musselbra. Yeah, the Musselbra hat by Zolda Teague. Um, I'm going to knit this for my husband. I've got no urgency on this. It's not like a Christmas or birthday present. So not like the Christmas jumpers, which have to be completed. Um, so I'm just sort of picking this up as and when. Because um, it's sort of, I'm in the round and round now. I've done all my increases, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and it's basically, um, you've probably seen this on hundreds of other podcasts, um, but I'm trying to find, sorry, I'm trying to find a good photo to show you because it's all black and white anyway. Um, and it basically looks like that. Um, it's a four ply knitted hat and it's knitted in a tube. So you start off with increases, then you knit a big long tube, then you do decreases and then you put the hat inside it, self to create a mushroom shape. And then you fold up the collar and pop it on your head. That is what I believe I've seen on other people's. Um, so I decided to knit this in this lovely black yarn from Woolly Knit, which is um, a UK English company. Um, and this is in the colour charcoal and it's 100% British wool. And it's a, well, charcoal, it's not quite black. It's dark grey black, um, still hard to knit with. Um, and I am knitting this on three millimeter DPNs. Well, no, I started on three millimeter DPNs. I'm knitting it on three millimeters. So I started with my DPNs and I'm now on my round and round. Oh gosh, have I lost any stitches? No. Let's just move that away from there. Right. And this is as far as I've got. Not very far. It doesn't look big and it says in the pattern it won't look big. So I'm trusting the pattern. Um, but I've done the increases. You can just about see them in the light so I'm trying to get a good light because of the colour of the yarn so you can see the increases so I've done the increases and I'm just knitting round and round now on the hat um it's it is three mil needles for four ply it is quite a loose-ish gauge you can see you can see through it a little bit um but because the hat is doubled I think that'll be absolutely fine um yeah because it's all it will be double thickness there will be no gaps and it's 100% wool it's going to be super warm um so this is my pick up and put down project um and I was going to say something else about it oh what size I'm knitting <clears throat> um so it's one of those hats but you can use any yarn any pattern no not any pattern any yarn any needles um and then you just work out what gauge you need from that and she's got all these sort of spreadsheets that tell you what your gauge should be um and I am knitting the adult large um because i think my gauge was 8.5 something like that so i'm just in the adult large not the extra large and if it doesn't fit him it'll fit me bonus so and this is in my london bag 
London project bag. The other one's been in project bags. Um, this is in my London project bag by... Jibby Roo Sews. Um, I think I won this in a competition, actually. I won this in a little Instagram competition. So, yes, I'm going to pop that one back in. I might actually work on that today. I fancy a bit of round and round. I'm a bit tired after last night at the wedding. Um, next, uh, let's take you Let's take you to the socks. I've only got two more works in progress. Not many. I'm around 25 minutes. We're doing all right. Um, so every year I knit my family socks for Christmas. And then on Christmas Day, um, we all wear them and I get this nice photo with us all sort of stood in a circle showing our Christmas feet. Um, I don't normally knit them for my husband because his feet are too huge. I might this year. I'm undecided. Um, and I normally knit them in a theme. So one year we all had DK socks. Um, another year we all had sparkly socks. Then we had self-striping. So I tend to do a theme. Um, and this year I'm actually... So normally I just knit my standard vanilla pattern um, and I do put the details on Ravelry. I think I just, so for an adult, I cast on 64, for a child I cast on 52. I actually use the numbers from the Tin Can Knits Rylite socks pattern. That's a free pattern, um, but she's got loads of sizes, right from baby right through to giant adult or adult. And um, the, she... You know, the sizes in there are perfect. So I use her numbers for most of my vanilla socks um, without knitting the pattern as such. So I generally cast on 64, knit a leg as long as I want. I do a slip stitch, heel flap and gusset, um, and then a wedge toe. Um, but because my kids' feet, my youngest two are 10 and 8, um, and their feet are growing a bit, so they haven't got standard feet, their feet are growing quite quickly now. Um, I'm going to try a different heel this year. So I'm going to try the um, Acorn... Judy from the Acorn Knits. It's a magic heel. Um, I'm sure you can, I'm sure if you put that into Ravelry or Google, Judy's magic heel maybe. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm getting that mixed up with Judy's magic cast on. It's a magic heel pattern anyway by uh, Autumn Acorn Knits, I think her um, YouTube is. Um, so I'm going to try that for the kids because I think it will be flexible and last them sort of a few different food, food, shoe sizes. I haven't had breakfast yet or, or anything. Um, so I have started the first sock and I am using... For, so for the main colour this year, so I'm doing two colours. The main colour, I'm using this really lovely just grey. Um, and this is Cascade Heritage, which is a 75-25, so perfect for wool. It's quite thin four ply. Um, it's 437 yards or 400 metres per 100 grams. Maybe not thin, standard four ply. Anyway, um, but yeah, it's superwash nylon. So I'm just using that basic grey. Um, and then I'm going to do... And I don't know what any of these, hardly any of these yarns are that I'm going to show you. But anyway, what I'm doing, as you can see here, so I'm knitting, so I've done my rib. And then I've done, I think I've done 20, no, I did 20 rounds for the rib. I've done 15 rows of the colour here. Um, and then I'm doing a stripe of like a patterned or a self-striping. So I've got lots of, I've got a bag here of um, leftover sort of self-striping yarns from when I've done other socks and things so I'm going to do some like stripy colours here then a bit more grey then the heel and then on the foot I'm going to do another stripe across the foot um, of the colour that matches this one um, and I don't know what this is I'm afraid I can't remember where it came from I can't remember where I used it I've gone back through my Ravelry and I can't see where I've used this yarn um, but it's very pretty as you can see it's coming out like a micro stripe so this is the first one and this will be one of my kids ones so I cast on 52 stitches for this one um, and I'm using uh, two 2.5 millimeter DPNs I knit all my socks on on DPNs um, and I prefer 2.5 because I have quite a tight gauge and yeah so this is like my selection of leftover stripy stripy yarns that I'm going to incorporate into all the different socks so that's quite exciting. So I need to crack on to get those done for Christmas. Um, and this is in another Jibby Roo Sews bag. And this is my Christmas jumper bag. Um, and I've got a little snowflake. So my Christmas socks are in my Christmas bag, ready for, yeah, hopefully for me to crack on with. Socks are quite quick, aren't they? So looking forward to that. <clears throat> okay. Last work in progress before we have a couple of acquisitions um so 
that Christmas jumper was for my 10 year old um, and this Christmas jumper is for my eight year old. Well, she's gonna be nine in, in November. Um, but I've also knitted the size 12 and I think it's too big, <laughs> but you know, she can roll the sleeves up, can't she? It is a little bit too big for her, but she loves it. Um, and this is a pain, paid for pattern. Um, this is the festive yoke kids pullover and I'm trying to find a picture of it. I don't know if I've printed the pictures or not. Is that a picture? There we go. Um, and this is the, there we go. And it's the festive yoke kids pullover by Skein Deer Knits. Um, and it isn't, it isn't just this there's basically a chart um, and you get so there's a really long chart so you can knit it all the way down the body if you want to you don't have to just knit around the yoke um, and there are where is it where's the page come on there we go one two three four there are 20 different motifs um, that you can incorporate um, which is really lovely so I can use this pattern again and again and I can use the motifs in something else I can put them on mittens or hats or cowls um, so now I've got the pattern I've got 20 different Christmas motifs that I can then add into other things as well so it's a really worthwhile pattern if you're looking for sort of making lots of Christmas colour work things um, and here it is turn it round uh, here it is so again, it's a bit wobbly because it's not been blocked. Uh, so my colour work's looking a bit dodge. So we have got, so you do this like little, it's hard to see because it's not very, she's picked, my daughter picked the colour and it's a really low contrast. So it's quite actually hard to see. Um, and you get this like this little weird snowflake. Then can you just make out that's a reindeer? Uh, then you've got the pattern again. Then you've got snowman. Um, and then you've got a Christmas tree. Um, so this is, yeah, this is her Christmas jumper. Um, and this is knitted in Drops Lima again. Um, Drops Lima in the creamy colourway. So this is um, 0100. Um, and again, really lovely. It's super soft. The alpaca gives it a really bit of fluff. Um, and the contrast colour, if I can find it. So this is... Oh, it's all tangled. Uh, this is the contrast colour. It's a really beautiful light purple tonal, but as you can see, there's quite a lot of pale bits in there, which is why the contrast isn't so great, but that's what she wanted. Um, and that is, I'm trying to find the ball band. It's a blue fern yarn, so um, a lovely Shannon. Uh, it's a blue fern yarns colourway. Can't see the fern, can you? There we go, blue fern yarns. Um, and it's the colour... Oh, it's just a pink, purple, one of a kind. Um, I think, again, I did a Lucky Dip. I like Lucky Dips. Um, and it's a it's her platinum base, which is a four-ply. So I'm holding it double because it's four-ply. And it's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. Um, I'm slowly trying to use up my one-of-a-kind skeins. And colour work is just the perfect way to do that. Um, so there's, yeah, I've used up quite a bit. I have got a bit left, but I can put that into socks or something as stripes. But, um yeah so here it is i've finished the body um and i have cast on cast on i picked up and started the sleeves on this side um so again i i don't know if this is me but i didn't i'm really i'm a little bit cross with myself and i don't think it will hugely matter because she's a kid and she doesn't care um but the when you split for the sleeves, the stitch marker, it, I don't know, it just, it was in the wrong, I've split for the sleeves and, well, you can see. So this should be the front here and this should be near the back, <laughs> but it isn't. And I've knitted the whole body and I've started on the sleeve and I'm not ripping it back because it is largely, the short rows are at the back. Um, and it's just small, it's a small bit to the side, so it's not perfect, but it's going to have to do because I'm not ripping it back now. Um, if it had been if it had been for me or a gift for someone else, I would have done, but not for my kid. Oh, I'll show you my, my stitch marker, my, my progress keeper. Uh, is That's from Bobbles and Berries, that cute little sheep. 
she does some beautiful stitch markers all hand embroidered um so yeah i'm knitting again i'm knitting it to pattern um but i don't know if it was me or if it was the pattern but just if you do decide to knit this just keep an eye on when you split for the sleeves to make sure your short rows are at the back and not halfway around the neck like this one is uh, but it knits up really beautifully you can see the halo you can see it clearer on the white than you could on the blue so yeah i've just got two sleeves to do for that one and i need to get that done by the end of october really so she can which shouldn't be a problem now just two sleeves um because it's quite a thick sort of dk worsted sort of yarn um, and that shouldn't be a problem to get that finished ready for november so she can start wearing christmasy things because that's what we do in this house um, and that is all I'm working on at the moment. I was doing, in the last podcast, um, I was knitting on a blanket that I've designed, so I haven't worked on that yet. I'm going to finish that Christmas jumper and then I'm going to come back to the blanket. Um, and I was knitting on some Christmas teddies for my girls, um, the Knitted Animal Friends. And I haven't picked those up either. I just focused on getting the Christmas jumpers out of the way. So if the Knitted Animal Friends aren't ready for Christmas, then they're not. Um, they will be next Christmas, but that's fine. That's fine, you know, that it's the sort of thing that can wait. Um, okay, so acquisitions. Um, so we went on holiday to... Actually, I'll show you this one first, because this isn't from France. <clears throat> um, I saw this on Instagram and I completely got influenced and had to buy it straight away because I was on a colour work kick. Um, and this is the Knitivation um, book by... Uh, Knitivation Stitch, Stitch Dictionary by Andrea Rangel. Rangel, Rangel, and look at all of those colourwork motifs. Um, and she very kindly says in the book that you can use these in your own designs and patterns and sell it. Um, you don't even need to credit her. I mean, obviously I would, that would be rude not to. Um, but yeah, so this would be perfect. So I might do some, I might make up some cowls or I might make some new sweaters. Um, but there are so many, I, look at, I love that. I love the leaf one and yeah, that one's really pretty. It's great for kids, babies, so many, it's 150 patterns in here. So this book um, is, is really good. So I'm quite looking forward to working with that. Um, and then yes, at the end of August, we went on holiday to France, to Normandy. Um, we stayed in a caravan site with a company called Siblu, um, S-I-B-L-U. Really recommend them for kids' holidays. They've got them all over France um, and they're incredible caravan parks with like great entertainment uh, facilities, really, really good. Um, <clears throat> and I thought I wasn't looking for yarn. We were on a on a day trip out, and my daughter we went, we drove through this town to get somewhere. And my daughter was like, "Oh, mummy, there's a yarn shop." And I was like, "What? What? A yarn shop?" <laughs> um, but we'd give, driven past it. And we were on our way somewhere, so we went out. We did our day trip, and on the way back, my husband said, oh, "Shall we stop? You know, do you want to go in and have a look?" Um, and my daughter wanted to buy some yarn for her friend's birthday because she's crochet. Her daughter's her her friend is a crocheter, so she was like, "Yeah, let's stop." So. We did stop and I did pop in and I <coughs> found some, some delights. It was quite small. There wasn't a lot. There was a few yarns that I can get in this country. Um, so obviously I didn't want to pick those up. But I did pick up a couple of yarns. So I picked up this um, Fildar Filchik. Um, and it is, here we go, in this. <laughs> I picked up two balls of this beautiful electric blue. <gasps> Look at that. Um, and it is... I picked it up because it's a slightly different sort of composition and it felt soft and it's 50% mohair, 30% wool and 16% polyamide and 2% elastane. So it has got 18% um, sort of nylon-y stuff in it, um, but it is mohair and wool, which I thought was really interesting. It's got no silk in it. Um, so that's that blue lace and I, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. Um, but it was such a bright colour, I thought I'll, I'll try that and pick it up. I quite liked the composition. Um, and I picked up this skein of Superba Merino Linen Silk for socks. Uh, really beautiful colours, can't wait to knit this up. Um, and I've not knitted silk, I've not knitted socks with linen in. So yeah, it's Merino Linen and Silk for socks. And it comes up with that beautiful stripe. You probably can't see that very clearly. It's not a very clear image. Um, and 100 grams is 395 metres, so slightly thicker four ply, um, but I should be able to get some socks out of it. And it's 55% virgin wool, 25% polyamide, 10% silk and 10% linen. So I'm really interested to see how these wear. 
Um, so they have got that little bit of polyamide in and the silk, which will give it strength. I'm not quite sure why, why you would put the linen in it, what that adds to the socks. If anyone knows, you know, like the, the strengths and properties of linen and why they would be good for a sock, I'd be really interested to hear. But I'm looking forward to knitting that one up. I can probably get that one over here. I just, just looked interesting to me. But this one, and I wish I'd picked up a sweater's quantity, but I just couldn't afford it. Um, but this one here, oh, look at this. So this is a Normandy, this is a yarn from Normandy. It's this beautiful red, uh, rusty, sort of rusty red colour. Um, and it is Berger a Brave. I'm not going to try. That's what it says. Associates, a Babri Associates. And it's by Lan, Lan, Lina Alaquest. Pure wool from Normandy. Um, and it is, um, oh, it's from Lesse. I don't know where Lesse is. Uh, pure wool from Normandy. It's a sport weight. It's 100 grams. It's 260 meters. Um, and I just got one because I thought it would make a really nice hat or a cowl. And it's really, it's, it's, it's rough. It's proper. It feels like wool. And it smells like wool. Um, so I was quite excited to come home with a Normandy yarn. Um, if they have got, a website on here um i don't know if you're going to be able to read that uh if that's going to show up might not uh is that going to work no um but yes i'm sure you can google it so excited for that so that was my um wool purchases um i did buy a couple of other things that are not really for wool but i'm going to use them for wool so as part of our trip, we went to oh God, it is, uh, we went to Le Mans Saint Michel, um, which is um, so in England we have Saint Michael's Mount, which is like a a big castle house on a on a mountain on a hill um, in the middle of the sea, and you can only get to it when the tide is out or by boat. So there's a path that sort of when the tide is out, there's a path and you can walk to it, um, but otherwise you have to get a boat. And Le Mans Saint-Michel used to be like that. Um, it's a big monastery uh, with hundreds of shops and restaurants, not hundreds, but loads of shops and restaurants on this little winding path. It's amazing, incredible. If you ever get a chance to visit it, please do. Um, and they've built a road out to it now, so lots of cars and things can get there. But anyway, we went to Le Mans Saint-Michel and I picked up this little tin. So that's basically what it looks like, a big monastery on top of a, a sort of an island. Um, and this was full of caramels. Um, it is no longer full of caramels, but it will be full of stitch markers and little things like that soon. So I'm going to use that little tin for sort of my knitting. Um, and I picked up this bag as well. <clears throat> um, really beautiful, like with trees on it. And it's got Le Mans and Michel written on the front. Um, and it's, yeah, I haven't used it yet. It's got two little handles and it's got a zip. So I thought this would be perfect for um, a little sock project or something like that. So I thought, yes, I picked up a new project bag and some and a stitch marker too. So that was my, that's my acquisitions. I am waiting on a couple. Um, I've done a few pre-orders for um, some things. So hopefully they'll come and I'll podcast when those arrive. Um, and I was quite, I was successful yesterday in getting some new to Dun yarn in their sort of September sale. Um, I've got a bright red and I I just fell in love with it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Something something festive, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, so that should be coming in a few weeks as well. Um, <clears throat> okay, life, life news, I guess. Um, oh, I just like to say, I've said on here loads of times, I'm quite an avid reader. Um, and if you want to come and follow me on Goodreads, I am Stacey J. Lou, so S-T-A-C-E-Y-J-L-E-W. Um, if you want to come follow me on Goodreads, I read a lot. I, I generally read sort of like fantasy, um, yeah, science fiction, fantasy type books. Um, but I read quite a lot, so I, I can't, I'm not going to come on and do a review, a uh, book review on here, unless anyone's really interested and then maybe I can pick my favourites. Um, so if you are, let me know below and maybe I'll add that on to the end of my next podcast. Um, but so life stuff, yeah, we went, uh, some holidays are well and truly over now. Um, we are in October, there's only three weeks till half term actually, so that's quite exciting. 
Uh, we went to France, as you've as I've mentioned, and we had a lovely week there in Normandy traveling. Um, <clears throat> my daughter has just started year 11, so she started her GCSE year, so that's a big year for her. So, and she's also 16 uh, next a uh, week and a half, so on the 10th, 10th of October, she's 16. Um, so we're sort of planning that at the moment. Uh, me, my, me and my husband, my husband and I, uh, it's our 20th wedding anniversary in April. So in February, we have been, in February we have booked a trip to Copenhagen for a few nights. Um, and I'm very excited. I'm going to go to a wall shop. He doesn't know that yet. Um, but I'm sure we will find time to find a yarn shop in Copenhagen. Or I did look and I think there's about 20. But I will find time. So if anyone's been to Copenhagen, I can recommend the best yarn shop to go to. Um, please do please do, please put it below or tell me anything else that's really good to do. It's the off season in February, so I don't know what's open. And we've only really got two full days. Um, so yeah, so if they've got any recommendations for Copenhagen, please put those below. Um, and yes, yeah, so I'm getting ready. I'm getting excited to my friend Cherie from the Ollie and Bella podcast. We're going to the Lay Family Yarn Knitting Retreat in November. Um, so I'm really excited to go to that and I've got to plan what projects I'm going to take and all that kind of thing. But we've booked our train tickets now, we've booked our accommodation, so that's really exciting. I've never been on anything like that before, so I'm looking forward to that. I'll try and take some video maybe or photo while I'm there. Um, I hope to podcast in half term, so that's in three, three or four weeks' time. So fingers crossed I'll get one in then before we go on our on our trip. Um, and yeah, that's everything. So. Um, yeah, again, thank you for if you're a subscriber, but if you're not, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. I'd like to get to a thousand. That would be sort of my next my next goal. Grow the channel. I like sharing what I do um, and I will try and link everything below that I've talked about. And yeah, I will see you again soon. Bye.